Hello, and welcome to episode four of Armoring for Cosplay. In the past couple episodes, I talked about how to hit things with hammers and what kind of tools you'll need to start working in metal and what kind of materials you might work with. Uh, now I'm actually going to start making a thing, and what I'm going to work on over the course of the next several episodes is a full metal arm. So we're going to make a pauldron. Uh, I'm going to make it with three lames. It'll be very similar to this, but with uh, three of these guys. Um, and an articulated arm. So what we're going to talk to about today, before we start hitting anything with hammers, is how to cut this stuff out. And before we start cutting anything, we're gonna need a pattern. Uh, pattern making is one of those skills that takes a lot of time to develop and a lot of experimentation to figure out how things work best. Uh, when I'm making a pattern, usually how I start is uh, sort of make a rough in cardboard or tape up the thing that I wanna simulate and then lay that out flat and then that gives me a rough idea of the pattern I'm gonna work with. And usually I cut out a bit bigger so I can trim off the edges. Uh, to start though, I'm gonna start with a couple of the patterns I used uh, because they're freely available on the internet. If you go to the Armor Archive, it's a community of people that do this kind of thing and people have put up some designs there. And I've grabbed a couple of designs. Uh, so we have a 15th century uh, Gothic plate arm and a simple pauldron. For cutting purposes today, I'm just gonna cut out one piece because you don't have to watch me cut out every single piece. So this is my sheet of 18 gauge, 3003 aluminum. Uh, so it's uh, been around a while. Uh, it's got a bit scalped up and it's nice to start uh, with a nice clean surface. So I'm gonna wipe it down. So I have my Sharpie here and my pattern and I'm just going to trace around the edges of this. Uh, fit on as best as I can. Um, I always want to leave a bit of a gap so I can clean off whatever gunky edge I left from my last cut. Uh, butt it up against my machine edge. So here's my pattern all laid out, and you'll notice a couple of things. One, I've left a gap everywhere, even between nice straight lines, because uh, when I cut these out, especially using shears and aviation snips by hand, the edges can get a little rough and gouged, and you always want to leave a little bit so you can clean that off. Uh, also, uh, my pattern has holes marked on it, but I am not marking those holes or cutting those holes at this point. You always want to leave your holes till the very end if you can, because as you uh, manipulate the metal, as you stretch it and bend it and shape it, those holes can get elongated and they can also be a source of tears as you start stretching metal. It can actually tear from those holes outward. So it's best to leave those till last. As far as cutting goes, there's no magical technique. It's just like using scissors. Uh, the only thing to watch out for is that these shears have a specific direction. Um, most shears are designed to cut one way or the other way. And these ones are uh, designed to cut into right-hand curves. 
So the entire cut that I'm going to make, I want to follow around along the right hand curve and never have to do a left hand curve. I'm also going to cut a bit outside the line because that's going to make my life a lot easier. I can always file back to the line, but if I overcut or gouge it accidentally, it's hard to make the metal bigger after the fact. So I'm going to leave a fairly large gap on this first cut, just as a rough cut. And you can see, because the metal's so thick, I kind of have to bend it as I go. And this might actually take more strength than anything else uh, in armory that you're likely to do. Uh, the hammering, the hammer will do most of the work for it, but here you actually have to bend the metal. So there's my rough cut, and you can see I left a fair amount on uh, outside the line. I'm now going to go over that again with the snips, but they're much better at taking off that thin edge than they are about cutting through uh, deep material. So again, outside the edge, outside the line. So these little swirls that come off as you cut out sheet metal are uh, super sharp. They have really pointy tips. So be careful to catch them all or you will find them in your feet or your housemate's feet and they will not love you for that. So I have a shape cut out, uh, but the edges are a little bit gnarled. So my file, my cutting wasn't perfectly curved. There's little straight lines and little corners. And there's a couple sharp edges and a bit of uh, gouging from the snips. So the next part of cutting anything out is filing down the edges. So I have my lovely file and I'm going to uh, do this in three passes. I'm going to take a very gentle angle around one way and then flip it over and do the other way and then go right flat along the edge. And that should give me a nice clean pretty edge to work with. When you're filing, always file in one direction, always forward. The teeth of the file only cut one way, uh, and going the other way is going to put a lot of effort into doing something that does nothing, and can kind of gum up your file. And it doesn't take a lot of pressure. The file will do the work. Just sort of slide it gently over the edge until it's nice and clean and very slightly beveled. There's 
side one. So now I have my uh, blank that I'm gonna make my pauldron out of. Uh, nice smooth edges. After we're done hammering, we might want to clean them up again. Uh, but for now, they're smooth, they're nice and gently curved. There's no sharp uh, points sticking out. So these, this is gonna be nice to work with. And uh, next week, we can actually start hitting things with hammers.